Tom Delaney, the character I play in Safe, is um, a pediatric surgeon. He's the newly single father of two girls, one 16, and one 12, newly single because his wife, uh, six months before the show began, has died. Um, and uh, he is someone who's very capable in his professional life, but as a single, newly single father, he's kind of at his wit's end, out of his depth, and has actually recently, he confides in his friend, installed this software in his daughter's phone to track her whereabouts and read her texts because he otherwise has no sense of what's going on with her. Um, and shortly after we are introduced to Tom, uh, his oldest daughter goes missing. And the story of the show is, is um, there's a very much a thriller element where he's trying to sort of take things into his own hands because he doesn't feel like he's getting straight answers or is being adequately helped by anyone else and figure out what happened to her. Um, but in so doing, f discovers things about his, his past and his family uh, that, that sort of recontextualize his whole life. Um, and um, the character appealed to me um, because he was a normal guy um, who uh, was, was struggling for some sense of control in a world that, that, you know, was spiraling out of control. And he wasn't crazy. He wasn't um, uniquely capable or afflicted. He was a regular guy. Um, um, and in his exterior world, crazy things were happening, but, but uh, that was a bit of a change of pace. I think each role and each job, um, you, I mean, you certainly have your experience to, to, to lean on, but ideally I think you're sort of reinventing the wheel every time you're, you, fashion new tools as the job uh, demands them. And um, yeah, in the case of Tom, um, a part of it was his, his um, English-ness. Um, I'm not British, I was playing an Englishman, so there was a consideration on that front. Um, and familiarizing myself to some degree um, about what a pediatric surgeon's life might be like, or a veteran of the army, uh, British army might be like. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's just um, emptying yourself out so that whatever inspiration might flow through you when you get there on the day with uh, the other people. There was a sense that this was different in as much as the days were um, definitely going to be either 10 or 11 hours each day, whereas in America you shoot until you're done and sometimes, you know, you're, you're fighting to finish before the sun comes up the next day. Uh, so that was uh, a nice and civilized change. Um, and uh, I definitely heard a lot of different sounds coming from the crew members um, in terms of their accents. But, uh, you know, I think ultimately things are more the same than they are different. You know, it's, it's this, you know, when you, when you sign on to be a part of this little family that's making something, it's like joining a carnival. And, you know, and it's its, it's own organism. Um, but, um, you know, I certainly felt supported by the producing powers that be, but supported in the sense that I felt we were entrusted to, to do our job and weren't, weren't um, micromanaged. Um, and so the, the support I felt was maybe by a lack of overlording presence, you know, which I think uh, anybody who's in this appreciates. Harlan wasn't on set, but he was very much um, a presence at read-throughs and, and was sort of the captain of the ship, you know, the person who put us all on the same page in terms of what we were aspiring to create and gave us a, a sense of his enthusiasm and energy. And he was, he was continually a presence in, on the, you know, post-production side or in the writer's room side, you know, um, and, and was able to give me feedback on what he was seeing um, and hopefully, hopefully seeing in, in light of what I was 
hoping to convey. I know that when I um, finished acting school in 96, I guess it was, um, I literally couldn't have imagined uh, the, the opportunities I've had because they didn't really exist at that point. The idea of doing a long running television show meant that you were basically just cycling through the same story over and over again, um, investigating the same case or giving the same closing argument or whatever it might be, that you could, um, I mean, doing Six Feet Under, Dexter, so many of the great shows that are out there is, is, is this long form storytelling that, that can't be matched anywhere else. The degree of um, detail and complexity that you can um, take on and explore. It's, it's, it's sort of like a living novel in a way. And, uh, and yeah, as far as the production value of these shows, they, you know, they rival any um, film in terms of the, the um, talent of the people they hire to, 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 to shoot these shows, the budget that might be provided, um, and, and the appetite for risk-taking and um, boundary pushing that exists in TV is, um, I mean, that's really where it exists. Um, I, I would say maybe American film in the 70s, um, the, the, the only place where you could find the kind of adventurousness now is in television. Um, and uh, so it's a good place to be.